Yo, what's cracking, folks? Jeremy Vassar here with Practical Painting, and welcome to the introductory video to our How to Paint a Room series. In this video, I'll be giving a little bit of background about who we are, why we filmed this course, and then how we've structured it so that you guys get the most out of it. And then I'll be going over the supply list for all the stuff that we used uh, when we filmed uh, actually painting the room, and likely the supplies that you will be using uh, when you paint a room of your own, uh, which is very likely why you are watching this in the first place. So if you want to skip ahead to the part where I just go over the supply list, jump to this timestamp, which I will put on the screen somewhere, uh, and then you can move on with your day. So as I mentioned before, my name is Jeremy, my brother's name is Josh, and we have owned and operated our own painting contracting company for over 15 years now. Uh, we primarily do interior and exterior painting for residential clients. We also do a little bit of commercial work uh, all over the greater Philadelphia area, but really residential painting is our bread and butter. So we decided to launch this YouTube channel. One of the things that we did early on is we filmed this series of how to paint a room where we just filmed the whole process uh, that we've honed in over the years of exactly how we uh, stage a room, break it down, do all our prep work and all of that stuff. And uh, we decided to put it up on YouTube for free for you all. And uh, it's gonna be inside of a playlist once all the videos are up. Um, they'll you know, be coming out in sequence, but um, depending on when you're watching this, hopefully all of them will be up by then. But um, it's a little bit different than some of the other content that we've made on our channel because each video feeds directly into the one that follows it. And there's not a lot of like intro, outro stuff. It just kind of uh, continues along that, uh, that process. So some of the videos might not apply to what you're doing for your own room, but uh, you know you might not be painting the ceiling, so you can skip that video. Uh, but yeah, feel free to jump around as needed. I would recommend following our process because one of the things that people run into, including uh, professional painters, is they don't stick to a process, and that way you know they paint one room one way, one room another, and then you get some inconsistencies, you might get things missed, trim missed, ceilings not done correctly or, or whatever. So if you stick to a process, even if it's not ours, uh, it, it tends to make things go a lot smoother, which is our goal. Um, really with this channel, we wanna smooth out all of the friction points that exist when you go to paint a room of your own. And uh, because we have done it quite a bit, we, we know where those friction points are. We just wanna make everything as smooth and painless as we can uh, for your various painting endeavors. So I think that's enough of a lead up. Let's get to the supplies and a little caveat on the supplies. None of this is sponsored content. Um, some of this stuff you can get on Amazon, which I will link to. Those will be affiliate links. We get a few shekels if you use those. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It just helps us out a little bit with uh, keeping this channel running. Uh, but if, it, if you can't get it on Amazon, I will mention where you can get it, uh, whether it's Sherwin-Williams, Home Depot, Lowe's, or a Benjamin Moore store. And that way you can get it wherever you need to get it. Painting particularly, the cost of the materials compared to the labor cost. Like if you, say for instance, you hired a painter, 20% of that job cost is going to be materials, roughly 15 to 20%, and the rest is going to be labor, which is why a lot of homeowners or DIY folks will do uh, the painting themselves because you can save quite a bit of money. Uh, that being said, it behooves you to not skimp on the materials. The difference between crappy materials and good materials, it, it doesn't, it's not gonna cost you that much more to get some good stuff, and it will save you a lot of pain and suffering in the future. So uh, yeah, get some good stuff, take care of it, and it'll last you a really long time. That way you can use it uh, in the future when you paint some more rooms or other things in your home. Okay, so onward to the actual supply list. I'm gonna go over this kind of in the order that they appear-ish in the video series and it'll follow kind of our sequence of you know how we prep rooms and all that stuff. So very likely when you go to paint a room, you're gonna have to move some furniture. That's why we like these furniture movers. This is the slippery one, and then this one is the same thing as this, but it's covered with a carpet pad. The slippery one you would use to move furniture that's on carpet, it just makes moving heavy things uh, really easy, and it, usually they sell these in packs of eight. If you're moving stuff on hardwoods, use the carpeted one. That was go that will go a lot better for you. That way you won't uh, scuff up your floor. All right, so once you move the furniture, it's a good idea to vacuum, and you might find that there's a lot of dust, you know, on the walls or in your vents or on the baseboard or anywhere like that, even like some cobwebs up in the ceiling. Really good idea to just run a vacuum real quick. You can use a standard household vacuum with a hose attachment to get some of those harder to reach areas. Or you can use what we use, which is a shop vac. This is just a rigid that we got from 
Uh, Home Depot, we've been using these for a super long time. If you are going to use a shop vac like this one, I would recommend putting a bag in it uh, because you're going to be vacuuming up a lot of spackle dust and um, uh, like other particulate. And if you're sucking up really fine dust, it'll blow it straight out the exhaust if you don't have a bag in it, and that'll ruin your day. So that's my, my little caveat about that. Uh, some other things you're going to need preliminarily as far as like once you set up the room is going to be a ladder and depending on how tall you are and how high your ceilings are that will uh, kind of determine what size of ladder you need. Uh, a lot of times you can get away with something like this. This is just a two and a half foot step ladder by Werner. Um, so uh, I'm six foot and uh, most of the residential ceilings are about eight feet tall so uh, I can use this and it's just fine to move around really quickly. It's lightweight and it's much sturdier than like a stepping stool or something like that. Just be careful. We do call this one the Widowmaker because a lot of people will walk up this way, turn around, paint something on that direction and then step off the wrong way. And uh, a good buddy of mine snapped his ankle doing that. So just be, be aware. If you're painting a little bit higher ceilings, like 10 foot ceilings or whatever, my, my go-to ladder is actually this guy behind me. This is a four foot... Uh, ladder. I think it's rated for like 250 or 300 pounds. Just make sure the you don't want to get the cheapest one. That's the basically the way the the weight ratings go with ladders. The heavier it's rated, the more sturdy it's going to be, and it'll just be more stable when you're up on it. So um, I would highly recommend a four foot ladder is probably the most useful ladder that we have in circulation. We really like using these. It's probably my most commonly used one. Um, so. Uh, and also ladders are great because once you buy them, they're not that expensive. You can keep and you'll use them forever. You'll probably never have to buy another one of that size again. So one of the other uh, pieces of prep work you have to do is pull off face plates and anything you have hanging on the walls, which is why you'll probably need some screwdrivers. Uh, I usually have, these are just standard flathead and Phillips uh, head screwdrivers. Uh, you can also use, I really like the ones that have interchangeable bits on them where it's got like a small side for both and then a larger side for both. I don't have one right now because uh, I think I gave it to my brother. So one of the first things we do as well is sand the walls and you can use, you can sand them just by hand using your standard, this is 150 grit sandpaper from 3M. Uh, we also use sanding discs, which I just gave that one to my brother as well as using it on a job site today. But um, I'll insert some B-roll so you know what, the, what I'm talking about, but it's just a good idea to uh, sand down the walls and then you'll be using the sandpaper later to uh, sand down spackle spots and things like that. If you're using a sanding disc or another sanding implement, it's a good idea to use it on a, an extension pole. That's how they're meant to be used. Uh, this is just a four foot extension pole from Wooster. It's my favorite kind. It locks in really nicely with uh, any attachment you're using. It doesn't wobble, which is nice, and it gets out about four feet, which is usually all you need. Uh, then you're gonna need to tarp stuff off. We like tarping off furniture and things of that nature with painter's plastic. This is from Sherwin Williams. This is my favorite kind. They sell it a lot of other places, but uh, this particular kind uh, works really well because it has a static cling element to it. So it tends to wrap around furniture and other things really nicely. I wouldn't recommend putting that on the ground where you're gonna be walking because uh, that'll get really slippery and that's not really what it's for. Uh, for the floor, your carpet or uh, your hardwoods, whatever you're trying to uh, tarp off, I'd recommend just using standard drop cloths. These are eight ounce uh, four by 12s. I think we got all these from Sherwin Williams, but you can get them again, lots of other places. They're not, they're not super expensive and you can use them for a really, really long time. Uh, you can wash them and uh, keep them going. We've had some drop cloths like pretty much since we started. Just one little caveat, the, some folks will use old bed sheets and stuff as drop cloths. The only issue you're gonna run into with that is that bed sheets are not designed to block paint. So if you actually have a legit spill, it will go right through your bed sheet and into you know, the carpet or the hardwood and you're gonna have um, you know, a little bit of a situation to deal with. So in my personal opinion, it's worth it to get some good drop cloths. You can use them forever and ever. Uh, onward to more prep. Uh, we like using wood putty. This is wood putty from slash wood filler from Sharon Williams. You can also get the Elmer's variety from uh, Home Depot and Lowe's and all those places. Uh, we use caulk. This is the powerhouse caulk from Sharon Williams. This is our favorite stuff. We use it constantly and we use it out of a gun like this. This is a dripless gun. Uh, again, these are not cost prohibitive. So 
Uh, what's nice about this one, as soon as you let off the trigger, the caulk stops coming out of the tube, which is really nice. As far as like job site cleanliness goes, we always are rocking around with a bunch of uh, black contractors bags. These are really nice. You might not need to roll this big, but that's what I had lying around. And then we also use white kitchen trash bags uh, for a variety of reasons, which uh, you will see in the series. It's a good idea to have a couple tools in your pocket. Uh, one of the things that we I li always like having in my pocket is a blue paper towel. Uh, you can also use your standard kitchen paper towels if you don't have any of these. Uh, but these are really nice, very absorbent, helps with wiping up small spills or getting, uh, you know, cleaning off your fingers with caulk and, and that kind of stuff. So I actually made a video on all the stuff that I have in my pockets when I paint. And I will link to that somewhere around here. If you want to check that out, you can go ahead. But it's a good idea to have like a knife on you, maybe like a multi-tool like this one. Um, and and uh, just a few other items to make your, your process go a little bit smoother. So we did quite a bit of spackling in the room that we painted uh, for the series. And I used this all-purpose green label spackle, just your pretty standard stuff. You can get a huge bucket of it from, uh, you know, Sherwin-Williams or Home Depot for uh, not that much monies. So I'm not super fancy when it comes to spackling. I just use an eight inch spackle blade, looks like that, and a six inch. This is my main weapon of choice. And I like this one a lot because it has a uh, metal um, like butt on the end of the handle, which is nice for like smashing and nail pops and things like that. And then onto the good stuff, which is actually painting. This is where I would suggest not skimping out and buying cheap stuff, brushes. So these are the brushes that we use. Uh, this is my personal favorite. This is a two and a half inch Corona Cortez. Uh, sash just means it has this angle to it. My brother prefers the two inch variety. Uh, that's just kind of a personal preference. I've used all kinds of brushes. These are by far my favorite. Uh, they're really not that uh, costly, but if you wash them out correctly and store them well uh, in, their, in their covers, they can last you a really long time. And uh, you know they cost the same as you know a lot of other you know brushes that you would see rocking around. But uh, they are sold on. I will link to them on Amazon. But the only other place you can get those is at a Benjamin Moore retailer, and that is where you get them. Great, great brushes. They're made in America. Super awesome. Highly recommend. Okay, and then for an edging container, we use these Handy Paint paint pails, and they generally come with these inserts they go right in here and then what's nice about that is that it has a little magnet right here which then uh, keeps your brush upright bristles down in the paint and will keep it wet and happy which is good it also has an adjustable strap down here so you can size it to your hand as needed we really we enjoy these they are quite handy <laughs> then on to rolling we use standard nine inch roller frames. This one's from Quick Release, and I think this one's from Wooster. Uh, fairly basic, there's not a whole lot of, uh, you know, tech behind these fellas here. But um, yeah, that pairs with a, a nine inch roller cover. And so these are the Purdy White Dove roller covers of the 3 8 nap variety. You can also use half inch, that's really just like a personal preference. But it's really nice to at least have a pack of three or get a couple packs because very likely you're gonna be using a roller for primer, ceiling paint, and wall paint. So that's three right there. It's just nice to have it where you're not trying to wash these out and uh, switch between paints. Uh, paired with that setup is a jumbo tray with jumbo tray liners. That makes it really easy for cleanup and you can fit about a gallon of paint in here. Works really good. And uh, again, like I, I think I mentioned that before earlier, but this is the extension pole that I use. It's by Wooster. It goes from two feet to four feet and works really, really nicely. Oh, we do use a little bit of tape. Uh, this is my favorite is frog tape of the one inch variety. It comes in this container, looks like this when it's on the roll. We use this stuff for taping out trim. Uh, but also taping up plastic and different things. We also write on it with a Sharpie and label our various paints and supplies and different stuff like that. And so as far as the actual paint that we bought, uh, all of it is from Sherwin-Williams. We used their uh, drywall primer, which is very basic primer. It's not that expensive. We used their Promar ceiling paint uh, for the ceiling, and that's a dead flat ceiling paint. I really like that stuff. I made a whole video about it. And, uh, and then for the trim, we used Duration Semi-Gloss. And then for the walls, we used uh, Duration Matte, um, which is uh, kind of our standard loadout for most of the residential work that we do. 
uh, really good paint, finishes nicely, and if you again are curious about what finishes go where, I also made a video about that. So if you guys have any questions and concerns about any of the techniques that we show or products that we used as you're going through the series and maybe painting your own room, uh, you know, you might have some questions that are specific to the project that you're working on. Just leave it in the comments below. I'm going to do my very best to get back to everybody. And uh, if enough people ask a similar type of question, then perhaps I will make a video about it. But uh, I think that's going to do it. So best of luck uh, painting your room. I hope you guys enjoy this series. And until next time, y'all take it easy, work smart, and have a good one. Peace. Amazing.